Strange Wills. Starring the distinguished Hollywood actor, Warren William, and featuring Marvin Miller, with Howard Culver and an all-star Hollywood cast. Original music by Del Castillo. Dead men's wills are often strange. We cannot attempt to understand them or try to find the answers. We can but tell the story. This is Warren William bringing you the story, Death Has Ten Words. But first... Now, Death Has Ten Words, starring Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. The annual police benefit at the Civic Auditorium was a great success. I started out for the auditorium that night. In fact, three of us did. In our party was Police Commissioner Jack Wilson, Michael Flanagan, crime reporter, better known to the boys as just plain Mike, and myself. Around 8 o'clock, we left the commissioner's home in Pinewood and began the long drive along the river into the city. I remember the commissioner and I were kidding Mike about his work as crime reporter on the Daily Tribune. As we crossed Canada Boulevard, something happened to alter our plans. Something entirely unexpected. Well, commissioner, you're making pretty good time. Commissioner Wilson... Commissioner Wilson. Oh, press that button for me, Mike. There on the dash. This car has two-way communication. Oh, modern, huh? Anybody think you had a real police department, Commissioner? <laughs> Sergeant, Sergeant, can you hear me? This is Wilson. I can hear you, sir. Here's something hot. We just got a tip that Lefty Light is sitting in his car out in Beverly Glen Canyon. Oh, can't a guy do a little necking without the police picking him up? Is Lefty wanted by the department, Sergeant? He won't be anymore. Why? Guy that phoned in the tip said he's dead as a macro. Lefty Light dead? Hey, let me out of this crate. I gotta call a paper. Boy, what a scoop. Can't you see that headline? Lefty Light, boy banded of the Badlands, bumped. Quiet, Mike. Sergeant, where can we find Lefty? You'll find him in his car about 200 yards north of Beverly Glen Roadhouse. You know where that is? Beverly Glen Roadhouse? Yes, yes, Sergeant. I'm not far from there now. Send out the boys and notify the coroner's office. They're already on the way. Good. I'll meet them there. If anything more comes up, contact me. I will, sir. Well, boys, you heard. Did we hear? Say, Commissioner, do you realize the murderer Lefty Light might elect this, uh, this anti-vice candidate for mayor? What's his name? You mean Edward I. Owen? That's a man. Well, this is a break he's been looking for. Well, there's no use guessing until we see the body. So hang on to your hats. We're going for a ride. Look, Commissioner, up ahead. Crowds of people. Yeah, I see them. This must be it. All right, all right. Everyone off the road. Get back. Come on, all the way back. Now then, let's have a look. Uh, there's a body, all right. Uh huh. Laying right on the steering wheel. Can't see his face, so it's too dark. Now wait, I'll turn on my flash. Yeah. Yep, it's Lefty. He's cool as a clam. Yeah. Well, what's he got in his hand, Mike? It looks like a paper of some sort. Well, wait a minute. I'll go around to the other side of the car and take a look. I'll go along. Well, can you imagine? 
Lefty Light with a copy of the mirror in his hand. The mirror. I didn't even know he could read. <laughs> After all, Mike, your Tribune isn't the only paper in town. John, Mike, keep everyone away from the car until the coroner comes. I hear a siren now, Commissioner. Good. It's about time. Well, boys, there's no question about how Lefty Light was killed. And as usual, the Tribune will tell you by whom he was killed. <laughs> Much later that night, Mike Flanagan, the crime reporter, came over to my apartment. I could tell by the look in his face that he had news. He had three slugs poured into him. That's official, right from the coroner's feed box. <laughs> That's no news. Come on, Mike, what's on your mind? I brought along something for you to see. Here, take a look. What? Another mirror? It's the one left he had in his mitt, remember? But why bring it here? What's so important about Open it? Open it up. Well, if you insist. Well, there's something written on it in pencil. Okay, John, read it. To Kitty L. Letterby. Everything I own. Gabriel Lefty Light. Good heavens, Mike, it's a will. A last will and testament. You don't have to be a lawyer to figure that one out. But how did you get it? Why didn't you turn it over to the police? It may have fingerprints. Ah, uh -uh. I've already checked. But, Mike, uh, this will have to be filed in probate. It will be. But first, I want to think about it for a while. What's that to think about? Well, first, why did Lefty make a will when he was dying instead of writing the killer's name on a newspaper? Oh, I can't answer that, Mike. Second, why did Lefty leave his dough to a girl named Kitty Letterby when he's already got a wife? Well, why don't you ask Kitty Letterby? I intend to. How did you manage to steal it, Mike? Oh, I wouldn't say I stole it. When the photogs opened the door to take fingerprint pictures, this newspaper fell out of the dead man's hand right down into the street. <laughs> right out of his hand into yours, you mean. It's an old newspaper man's trick, Mike. Well, as soon as I find out a few answers, I'll deliver it to Commissioner Wilson personally. Now then, how about a ride? A ride? At this time of night? Where to? You get the answer to one of the questions. I've located this Letterby dame. Already? Why not? That's part of my business. Where is she? She's a cigarette girl over at the Blue Fountain nightclub. But isn't it too late to see her tonight? If we see her now, maybe her resistance will be low. Ah. I want to talk to her, but plenty. Say, this is quite a place. Yeah, the Rogues Gallery on Parade, if you ask me. Hey, look. Look over at that end table. See that? Mm, I see a young, beautiful blonde, heavy with diamonds, with a man. It's the man you want to stay clear of, John. That's Spider Legs Kratz. Spider Legs Kratz? Yeah. Isn't he a sort of rival gangster to Lefty? Well, he controls the biggest mob in town. He's a beer baron of the West Coast. Cold-blooded as a toad and deadly as a rattler. Could he have killed Lefty? Could he? More than anybody else I know. Now he'll run both mobs. He'll be a real power. Well, just by way of diversion, who's the blonde? I don't know. Looks like an imported article, doesn't she? Ah. <laughs> oh, I'd give a month's pay to have Spiderleg's wife walk in here. Now she'd clunk him right over the head with a beer bottle. She's nuts about that hyena. <laughs> cigars, cigarettes, cigars. Say, that must be Kitty. Well, let's find out. Uh, hey, uh, over here, please. Well, will it be? I'll take a pack of these. Here, keep the change, Kitty. You, you know me? Only by reputation. Say, who are you, cops? No cops, Kitty. I'm Mike Flanagan of the Tribune. This is John Francis O'Connell, attorney at law. Hello, Kitty. Well, just imagine, celebrity. <laughs> oh, not half the celebrity you're going to be, young lady. What's the big man trying to do? Kid the little cigarette girl? Look, tell me something for your own good. Maybe. Were you Lefty Light, sweetheart? Say, who do you think you are? I've got a good mind to wrap this tray right around your neck. What do you mean, was I his sweetheart? Take it easy, Kitty. I I'm just trying to help. You better start, mister. You've got some explaining to do. So have you, Kid? Oh, yeah? Kitty, Lefty Light was killed tonight. Murdered. Lefty dead? Y you're kidding. I'm not kidding. And you're mixed up in it. Right up to your pretty neck. Me? Me mixed up in it? Say, what are you Before trying to... Before Lefty Light died tonight, he made a will. 
He left everything he owned to... Who do you think? Go ahead, I'm listening. To you, Kitty. Now what do you got to say? Lefty gave me everything, but why me? Well, I don't want it. Well, it's too late, Kitty. That will must be filed for probate. And when it is? Yeah. I get it. Oh, I want to find out why he made me his fall guy. Poor little Kitty. One jam after another. Well, maybe you can stay clear of this jam, Kitty, if you tell me what you know about Lefty. That's just it. I don't know anything about him. I only seen him once and twice in my whole life. That's the truth, mister. Did you talk with him? Sure, he liked to talk. But you can't hold that against me. Listen, kid. Did you ever see Lefty and Spiderleg's Kratz down here together? Are you kidding? They had a big argument right in that booth over there only last week. Oh, what happened? Well, nothing, but for a while it looked like one of them was going to come out feet first. Then all of a sudden... Lefty got up and walked out. Go ahead, kid. Well, on the way out, he looked at me for a minute. His eyes were cold. Then he said something about me taking a good look at spider legs because the next time I saw him would be in the morgue. Well, then he went away. Well, what about the next time? Well, that was just night before last. Lefty came in around 2 o'clock. The place was almost empty. He sat down in the same booth... I remember he was in good spirits, laughing and joking. Oh, that was the night he kept writing my name on the tablecloth. Writing your name, huh? Tell me about it, Kitty. Well, he called me over to buy a cigar. And then as he paid for it, he looked up and said... Say, kid, did your mother ever tell you you were cute? Yes, she did. So did a lot of wolves. <laughs> like me, for instance? Well, maybe some of them weren't so nice about it. Oh, that's worth a five-dollar bill to Lefty Light. Lefty, you better save your money. Someday you're going to need it for lawyers. <laughs> a cigarette girl with a sense of humor. Well, what do you know? Say, tell me something. Yeah? What's your name? Phone number two? No, no, kid. No phone numbers. My little book is full. Now, come on. What is it? Kitty. Kitty. That's a nice name. What's the rest of it? Well, what do you want to know for? I go for names, kid. I, I play with them, you know. Doodle. Well, it's... It's Kitty Lorraine Letterby. Kitty Lorraine Letterby. Yeah, wait, wait. I'll write it down on the tablecloth. Kitty L... L... Uh, Say, how, how do you spell your last name? L-E-D-D-E-R-B-Y. L-E-D-D-E-R-B-Y. There it is. <laughs> Kitty Lorraine Letterby. Well, Lefty, you go ahead and doodle and I'll make the round. All right, Kitty. Oh, say. Yeah? Here's the pin I promised you. That's for being a nice girl. <laughs> That's all there was to it. Just a wrong guy trying to be nice. He always Kitty, used to... Kitty, I hate to interrupt, but there's a man trying to get your attention. Where? At that table near the entrance. Oh, him. You know him, too? Yeah. Hey, isn't that... It's Edward Owen. Right, the anti-vice league candidate for mayor. Is he a regular customer down here, too, Kitty? Yeah, he comes down almost every night. Okay, Kitty. I'll come back and see you again. But, Kitty... Yeah? I don't know all of the answers yet, but until I do, promise to keep everything I've told you a secret. I will, Mr. Flanagan. Because if you don't, Kitty, I won't be responsible for what happens. Now remember, not a word. Okay. Not a word. Two of Death Has Ten Words, written by Ken Crapine and directed by Robert Webster Light in just a moment. First, here is a word from your announcer.
two of Death Has Ten Words, starring Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. Lefty Light's murder brought reverberations everywhere, from the mayor's office down to the lowliest citizen. And Edward Owen, candidate for mayor, heaped coals upon the fire. He demanded a change in the administration. He demanded the arrest and conviction of the murderer of Gabriel Lefty Light. He asked the citizens to elect him mayor. Three days before the election, the odds on his being elected were quoted as even money. On Monday afternoon, the day before the election, Mike Flanagan and I were together in Commissioner Wilson's office talking over the case. The commissioner was at his wit's end. Spider legs Kratz is an airtight alibi for every minute of the night left he was murdered. They always do, Commissioner. But there must be a loophole somewhere. I wish I knew where to find it, Mike. What about the will, Commissioner? Now that Mike's been a good boy and handed it over to your office, you can't keep it buried much longer. That's the thing that's got me puzzled. I've studied it for hours. It's just a will scribbled by a dying man. I can't agree with you there. Lefty liked to doodle with names. Isn't there any chance of finding out why he used Kitty's name in it? Oh, maybe he just liked her, John. What better reason is there? But Kitty told maybe me... Maybe she's telling you a good yarn, too, Mike. Girls will be girls, you know. How do we know she wasn't Lefty's girl? We have no proof to the contrary. Only the way she looked at me when she said it, she wasn't, Commissioner. Well, we've got less than ten hours to clear up this mess. Tomorrow, an angry citizenry will march to the polls. Yes? Mr. Owen in the outer office, Commissioner. Oh, tell him to... Wait, 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 Commissioner. Let him come in. He's just a pest for my Didn't money. Didn't you ever hear of pest control? Maybe he'll tell us something we don't know. All right. Have him come in, please. Yes, Commissioner. Mike, we're just wasting our time. He's just here to blow off steam. Come in, Mr. Owen. Thank you. You've met Mr. Flanagan of the Tribune, Mr. O'Connell, the probate lawyer. How do you do, Mr. Mr. Owen? How do you do, sir? Chair, Mr. Owen? No, thank you. What I have to say, I can say standing up and to your face, Commissioner. Go right ahead, then. I charge you, Commissioner Wilson, and the entire administration with malfeasance in office. I charge... Now, just a minute, please. Let him spout, Commissioner. I charge you, sir, with collaborating with the crooks, criminals, and murderers running rampant throughout this city. I demand that you arrest this notorious character, Spiderleg Scratch, for the murder of Gabriel Light. And I demand that you indict him for murder. Murder in the first degree. Is that all, Mr. Owen? No, sir. And I warn you now, Commissioner, that unless you arrest Kratz today, when I am elected mayor, I shall have you removed from office. Do I make myself clear? Quite, Mr. Owen. Well, that is all, gentlemen. Good day. <laughs> A little later, Mike Flanagan phoned me at my office. He'd been looking for Kitty. She was gone. Not a trace of her could be found. Had she been kidnapped or murdered by the killer of Lefty Light? Or had she fled to escape further questioning? I wondered. Back in the offices of the Daily Tribune, Mike Flanagan was on a spot. The final edition was ready for the presses, and the solution of the light murder case was still as far away as ever. Oh, come in. Hi, Mike. So you're taking up doodling, too. <laughs> well, little Patsy Brown, the Tribune's own sob sister. Come on in, kid. Sprinkle a few tears in my beer. You're slipping, you big He-Man reporter. Haven't you broken the case yet? Not only not broken it, but nowhere near it. Here, come on over and sit down next to me. I need sympathy. Okay. Gee, your desk looks like a crossword puzzle. I feel like one. Patsy, my queen, here is a copy of the last will of Lefty Light. Mm -hmm. In it are ten words, including a middle initial. You still think there's more in it than just a... I think Lefty Light left something more behind him than just a will. But no matter how I arrange the letters, nothing happens. To Kitty L. Latterby. Everything I own, Gabriel left delight. Hmm. Huh. Looks all right to me, Mike. Uh, maybe I'm off on a tangent. Have you separated all of the letters? A thousand times. 
Come on, kid. Let's do it together for the 1,000th and the first time, what do you say? <laughs> well, get me a pencil and some paper, Mike. Time's a wasting. <laughs> No use, Mike. No use. I guess you're right. Nothing comes of it. Well, what do you say? Let's quit. You know, sometimes when you try to be the most serious, crazy things pop into your head. Like what? You know what I get out of this, uh, this jumble, Mike? Oh, spill. A song. A song? <laughs> <laughs> That's more than I got. I can't get it out of my head. Want to hear it? Why not? I like your voice, kid. <laughs> well, did you ever hear the song that goes... Um, well, I think it's called Harrigan or something like Harrigan. that. Harrigan? Oh, sure. H-A-R-R-I. It goes like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, only I sing it. K-I-T-T-Y, double L-E-D, Flanagan. <laughs> <laughs> See how peculiar I am. Oh, you're just nuts, I'd say. Well, come on, kid. Go wash up and we have a bite to eat. <laughs> well, they're holding up the final, waiting for the great Mike to break the case. You have to put it to bed without me. I can't tell him a thing. <laughs> well, so long, Mike. See you in the drugstore. <sighs> K-I-T-T-Y. Double L-E-D. Flanagan. K-I-T-T-Y. Double L-E-D. Double L E D. L L E D. K I double L E D. Killed. Killed. I got it. I got it. Oh, let me see. Letter B. Letter B. B Y. By. Killed by. Killed by. Oh. Chief. Chief. Yes, Mike, what's the matter? Hold up the presses. Get ready for a page one replate. Why? Why? Call what? Commissioner Wilson. Tell him I'll pick him up in ten minutes. But, Mike, who... Hold everything till I get back. I know the killer, Lefty Light. In just a moment, we will bring you the strange ending of Death Has Ten Words. First, a brief message from your announcer. Now back to Death Has Ten Words, starring Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. Step on it, Commissioner, step on it. We're doing 80. Do you want to fly? It's only three more blocks. There's a house. Turn in the driveway. Never have an alibi for this, Commissioner. Yes, gentlemen. Show him your identification, Commissioner. There. Oh, police will come in, please. Where is he? I'll tell him you're here, gentlemen. Won't you sit down, please? We'll wait right here if it's all right with you. I'll call him. Lefty Light was a smart crook. Much smarter than this. Shh. Here comes our man. Good evening, gentlemen. We wanted to have a little talk with you, Mr. Owen. Oh? Has this Kratz fella confessed? No. And I don't think he ever will. And why are you here? We've just succeeded in deciphering Lefty's will. What's that got to do with me? He named his murderer in his last will. Want to hear about it? Why not? We found a will in Lefty's car. It was written the night he died. Go on. He named Kitty L. Letterby as his sole heir. Well, that was his own affair. But you see, Owen, Lefty wasn't really interested in giving his estate to Kitty. He had a wife. Why did he do it, then? He was a doodler, Owen. A guy who liked to play around with words. He liked to take one word and make other words out of it. The name Kitty L. Letterby contains the words, killed by. Now, do you understand? Well, these words in themselves mean nothing. Right. But when you take the first letter of each of the next three words, 
It means plenty. What were they? Everything I own. E-I-O. Does that shape up, Mr. E.I. Owen? Maybe you'd better start talking. What is there to say? Seemed to be all figured out. Why did you kill him, Owen? Oh, Lefty Light and I once served time in Illinois. Later, I came out here and I, well, I got a fresh start. And then you met him again. That's right. Once I started making money, he blackmailed me. When I ran for the office of mayor, he threatened to expose me. I had to kill him. He sat in his car in Beverly Glen Canyon. He begged me for time to make a will. He said there was a girl. And he wrote his will on that piece of newspaper. I read it. I saw Kitty's name. And then I shot and I killed him. What did you do with Kitty? Where is she? Oh, she has nothing to do with this. Leave her alone. All right, Owen. Let's get going. Not so fast. You see this gun? Don't be a fool, Owen. You can't get away. If either of you makes a move to stop me, it'll be your last. Come on, Mike. There he goes. Look out, Mike. You got him, Commissioner. Watch out, Mike. He may not be dead. You're right, he's breathing. You haven't much time, Owen. Is there anything you want to say? Kitty's innocent. She worked for me in the nightclub. She got information <laughs> for that campaign. Where is she now, Owen? Is she alive? Yes. I sent her away. Don't cause her any more trouble. She's had a lot of tough breaks. What are you so worried about, Owen? Why does Kitty mean so much to you? Kitty was my wife. Kitty came back after a few months and voluntarily reported to the police. No charges were ever filed against her. After Owen's estate had been probated, she left the city for good, never to be heard of again. The will scribbled on a newspaper by gangster left the light was never admitted into probate because his real will was presented by his widow and eventually the entire estate went to her. And so ends this unusual story, one of the strangest will in my collection. Next week I have a story to tell you about two brothers, identical twins. The course of their lives flowed evenly, smoothly, until a girl came between them. Only then were their true natures revealed. For the love of this exotic and charming woman, the brothers cast off their thin veneer of education and social standing and battled it out with no holds barred. We call this strange and unusual story The Killers and the Saints. This is Warren William inviting you to join us again next week. Strange Wills is a Telaways feature produced in Hollywood. Names, places, and time have all been changed so that no reflection can fall on any person or persons living or dead. 